हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द लेजर स्ट्रक्चर एंड इट्स रेडिएशन पैटर्न्स। लाइक द वे वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ द एलईडी, नाउ वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द लेजर स्ट्रक्चर्स सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग द डिफरेंट लेजर स्ट्रक्चर्स सो एज टू प्रोवाइड द बेस्ट एफिशियंसी right we talked about the external quantum efficiency the internal quantum efficiency we want to increase the overall total quantum efficiency and for that we are finding out which structure would be the best right so let's understand how to increase the efficiency so efficient operation of the laser would be happening if i have the transverse optical confinement right so the optical power is confined in the transverse direction or i can say the carrier confinement is in between the two hetero junctions so in these two manners i can have the optical confinement then we can have the lateral current flow to the narrow strip only and with the help of this i can have the current confinement in this video i will be talking about the optical confinement in the next video we will see how we can have the current confinement in between the narrow strip between the two hetero junction so we are having the lateral current flow to a narrow strip only this is called the current confinement and the carrier confinement between the hetero junction is called the optical confinement so i hope now you understood what is the goal we have to confine the optical output power we have to confine the input current as well so as to stabilize the gain the gain should be stabilized the threshold current that we are giving should be as minimum as possible we want to operate our devices at lowest power and for that i want to give the less current to the device and i want to decrease the threshold current to operate the device at a lower power now coming to the optical confinement method so first method is the narrow electrode strip we can use the narrow electrode strip you can see this figure here we have used this metallic strip and this metallic strip is less than 8 micrometer and it runs along the length of the diode now this is the metallic strip this is my diode above the active layer i have placed the metallic strip and this is the active layer and now here you can see we are having the carrier flow in this direction only below the strip so what it does it changes the refractive index of the active layer directly below it so we have the metallic strip directly below it the refractive index would be changed so carrier will be flowing in this refractive index only and this is how we are getting the lasing stop spot here only right so we will be having weak complex laser by this method by the narrow electrode strip i am not getting the good lateral confinement so this also is known as gain guided laser because i have changed the refractive index or i have changed the gain and where the gain is maximum the led will be operating in that place only so now the power is greater than 100 milliwatt but it will be having the strong instabilities and it will be having high astigmated two peaked beams you can see this structure we have two peaks at minus 20 and the 20 degree so we don't have the single peak of the lasing output what we want the laser output should be having a single peak right but in this uh, case it is not possible to have the single peak we have two highly astigmatic peaks and we will be having strong instabilities also so because of these limitations we are now moving towards the next type of method that which is the index guided laser right so index guided laser will be having the refractive index variation we are doing the refractive index variation and the refractive index variation is going to control the modes right when i change the refractive index the modes are going to change and in the dielectric wave guide structure we want the lateral output right so here you can see this is my index guided laser now here at this portion i will be having the higher refractive index in the central region i will be having the lower refractive index i can have reverse also in the central region i can have the lower refractive index in the outer region i can have the higher refractive index or in the central i have higher refractive index outer region lower refractive index so both 
possibilities would be there and due to which the index guided laser will be having positive index waveguide or the negative index waveguide among which the positive index waveguide is more popular right so the single mode laser will support only the fundamental mode or which can support only the fundamental longitudinal mode right so here i can say by making the index guided laser in such a manner that it support only one mode that is the fundamental longitudinal mode we are going to talk about this in the later video as well now if it is supporting only the fundamental mode it is called the single mode laser right so we have the single mode laser which will be having the single well collimated beam so you can see we have the single beam over here right so we will be having the single well collimated beam which will be having the gaussian profile of intensity distribution you can see the intensity distribution is a bell shaped curve which is representing the gaussian profile so i can say this type of intensity variation is the best output that we can have and now for that manner i can say index guided laser are better than the narrow electrode strip type of laser right so in the index i told you that we have two type of structure positive index waveguide and the negative index waveguide right in the positive index waveguide the central structure is having higher refractive index than the outer structure and in the negative index waveguide the central structure is having the lower refractive index than the outer structure now when the central structure is having the higher refractive index it will be similar to the core cladding surface in the core also we have higher refractive index than the cladding so what happens the total internal reflection of the light will happen and light will continue moving in this high refractive index central structure only so here also you can see we have the light which is traveling in the central structure by the total internal reflection phenomena so now here the light is reflect reflected at the dielectric boundary due to the total internal reflection because the outer surface is having the lesser refractive index and we will be having the better output with the help of the positive refractive index waveguide now with the help of negative refractive index waveguide if the central structure is having the lower refractive index than the outer structure with the reflection we will be having the possibility of refraction as well so light also refracted plus refraction will also be there which causes the light to be emitted out of the structure so when light goes out of the structure we will be having some losses right so a narrow side lobe will be present in the addition to the main beam so you can see here we have the narrow side lobe so this is the negative index structure this is the positive index structure output you can see the radiation pattern we have these side lobes which are undesirable and for that manner i can say the positive refractive index structure is more beneficial this is more useful right so now we have the buried hetero structure buried hetero structure will be having the varied thickness we have four types of refractive index structure which are going to give me the best output uh, we have to see what kind of four structures that we can make for the positive refractive index structure first is the buried hetero structure the buried hetero structure will be having the varying thickness and the bent layer configuration you can see this is my buried hetero structure laser diode we have the short wavelength gallium aluminum arsenide buried hetero structure laser diode then we can have indium gallium arsenide phosphide device as well or i can say it to be indian phosphide so indian phosphide device is used for the higher wavelength and the gallium aluminum arsenide device hetero structure device is used for the short wavelength and now here you can see this structure i have made for short wavelength gallium aluminum arsenide so you can make the similar structure for the longer wavelength for indium phosphide as well right so this structure is working for 800 to 900 nanometer and if i have the indium gallium arsenide phosphide active layer so we will be using the indium phosphide long wavelength structure for 1300 to 1600 nanometer laser so now here we will be having a narrow mesa strip mesa strip is a terrace type of strip so a narrow mesa strip will be there of 1 to 2 micrometer so you can see the structure here you can see we have a narrow mesa strip in double hetero structure material now here we have the n type material n type doping increased resistivity appropriate band gap and decreased 
refractive index. So now here you can see in this structure, this is the n-type gallium arsenide substrate. Over that we have n-type gallium aluminium arsenide distribution. Now here we have the confining layer. Confining layer of n-type gallium aluminium arsenide and above confining layer of p-type gallium aluminium arsenide. Now we have the active layer of p-type gallium arsenide. So now active layer here is p-type gallium arsenide for indium phosphide. I will be having indium gallium arsenide phosphide active layer over here. Now here you can see we have the silicon dioxide layer and this is the contact layer of p-positive gallium aluminium arsenide. So this is the first structure that we have. Now the second structure is the selectively diffused structure. Now in the selectively diffused, we are using a chemical dopant. Now chemical dopant is diffused in the active layer below the strip. You can see this is the structure of the selectively dip diffused. Here we are diffusing the chemical dopant like the zinc or the cadmium. Now here for the gallium arsenide, gallium aluminium arsenide substrate, I am using the zinc and for indium phosphide, I am using the cadmium. Now I am doping with the chemical dopant, zinc or cadmium in active layer and when I dope it, so from here only I am getting the lasing optical output. So you can see the output has confined to this portion only. In this case the output has confined to the active layer only and in this case at this spot only the output has confined. Now coming to the varying thickness structure. In the varying thickness structure as the name suggests, its thickness is varying. Right? So how the thickness is varying? You can see here the thickness is varying and now the channel is etched into the substrate. Right? So we are etching, removing out the channel and then we are putting the layer of crystals with the help of vapor phase epitaxy. So now layer of crystal are then grown onto the channel. First the channel is etched and then the layer of crystals are grown and now it is going to have some varying thickness by filling the depressions when the crystals are grown all of the depressions which are caused are filled and the perturbations are edged out and due to which I will be having a varying thickness at, at the location I am having the varying thickness I will be getting the lasing spot and you can see here I have confined the lasing output. Now then I have the band layer structure. In the band layer structure you can see we have two uh, refractive index materials so a mass mesa etched on the surface and semiconductor is grown over this. So mesa is a low refractive index surface so here you can see here we will be getting the lasing spot over which my continuous height would be there right here the height is varying here the height is varying so lasing spot is present where the height is continuous for this mesa spot and the semiconductor material so mesa spot is a terrace kind of thing over which i can deposit the semiconductor material so constant thickness of active layer would be there here you can see the problem was that the thickness of the active layer was not constant Due to the deposition, the thickness was changing, but here you can see when I am depositing the semiconductor over the mesa, I have the constant thickness throughout and we will be having the increased output power because the light is going to confine more in this case and this would be the best case among the three. And now I want to restrict the drive current. The second thing that I want to do was the confinement of the current. With the help of these four method I have confined the optical output, I have confined the light. Now in the laser I want the location or the confinement of the light for as small area as possible. So let's suppose this is the region on the semiconductor from which the light is emitting out. So if I want to decrease this region then I will be getting best and best output. I want to make this region as small as possible. Now I want to confine the input current as well. So now when I want to confine the input current, I will be getting the 60% of the current which is converting into the output, lasing output. Now how we can do that? We can do that with the help of increasing the resistivity and now we can change in the resistivity. We can make some of the regions of the diode working in the 
reverse bias region some of the region are working in the forward bias region in the next video we are going to see how we can confine the current in the laser as well so i hope you understood each and everything that i have discussed in this video if you have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and give me your feedback as well thank you so much